Hello, welcome to April episode of Curiosity, the science show. I'm Felix. I'm talking to you from Punjab in India. This is episode number 54. Uh, as usual, April, the etymology of the word, right? So April is coming from Latin verb apirere, that means to open up, as if the, the leaves are opening up in the onset of spring, right? So of course, April is the first month of spring here in Northern Hemisphere while uh, it is the first month of the autumn in the southern hemisphere and uh, it is the second quarter of this year the april and as per the florigraphy the language of flower the secret language rather april is a month of daisy flowers that is bellis perennis right bellis perennis uh, and uh, so many things are coming up in this month so much awaited solar eclipse the total solar eclipse uh, in the u.s and uh, you know the rest of the americas right central and north uh, america is coming up on the 8th right and also it's uh, uh, the month of mother earth day the un has designated 22nd of april as international mother earth day it's not just earth day it is mother right so by calling earth our planet as mother uh, the un is emphasizing or rather underlining the importance of conserving the nature isn't it and uh, the, the the full moon of this month is called the pink moon that's also coming up uh, around the mother earth day so as usual we will round up what really moved the world of science in the last month the new papers published and what uh, what are the, the, the new paradigm shifts and what are the take home messages uh, you know from the published literature the, the first and most important paper as, as far as my interest goes, I have a lot of interest on sustainability and the climate change. Uh, the paper is rather alarming. It says that the, because of the melting of the polar glaciers, Arctic as well as Antarctic, uh, you know, the Earth, of course, the Earth is rotating in its axial uh, axis, right? So axial rotation has slowed down. Something which uh, the, the climatologists have been predicting for quite some time now. I featured in most of my talk on Antarctic, if you have uh, listened to any of my talk. So it is one of the uh, repercussions of the climate change and polar ice cap melting. So now you can see that, uh, you know, that the rotation has slowed down. So basically what it means is that the, the days are getting longer. So it's not 24 hours, it's 24 point some, some seconds or so milliseconds or so microseconds. So it has ramifications on timekeeping as of now, but it, it will also have ramifications on runaway greenhouse gas because the days are getting longer. That means that ice will melt much faster, you know, uh, at an accelerated rate. That is uh, very alarming. Next story is a very fantastic story about... Um, our own legacy, the Indian population, where do we come from, right? So 50,000 years old genetic legacy, the phylogenetic heritage of the Indian population have been revealed in a, it's basically the paper is about the dementia, but more than the dementia longitudinal study, the paper closely looked at the evolutionary legacy of the human populations in the India, right? And the lead author is Priya Murjani, uh, Dr. Priya is assistant professor at a very prestigious university in the U.S. called Berkeley, University of California at Berkeley. Right? And uh, this the, the main message of this is that Indian population is an admix of three distinct population. The original settler, which came really long back, around 50,000 years back, were hunter-gatherers. Right? Then the another population came around 4,700 BCE. Uh, they are basically Iranian farmers, agricultural, the pastoralists, right, from Iran, they came in. Then, uh, a, bit, a bit more later, around 1900, that is 1900 BCE, uh, the gatherers came in from Central European steppe, the, the grassland. So, it's all mixed up, the population. The most important uh, finding of this study is that in India, we have uh, you know, remnants of Neanderthal genes in our genome, approximately 2%. And uh, that, that came as a big surprise because there is not a single Neanderthal and Denisovan fossils ever discovered from India. 
but our genomes have its legacy so maybe that we just uh, we are yet to discover we are yet to find these fossils and that is pretty interesting and more than that uh, 90 percentage of all non-neanderthal genes were present in indian uh, gene pool that is very interesting finding uh, i really like uh, this story a lot next story is also around the same time when the first human being immigrated to india of course from the out of africa right that is a currently accepted uh, theory of uh, human migration 50000 years back hunter gatherers right so around the same time uh, uh, this scientist from nio a group of scientists from national institute of oceanography in goa they found a very interesting bacterial fossil called magnetotactic uh, bacterial fossil magneto fossil so fossil which has magnetic properties in bay of bengal pretty interesting story got published in nature communications last week so woolly mammoth you know the mammoth is long back it went extinct right so de extinction inches close after the um, the uh, the stem cell breakthrough that is also pretty interesting de extinction means how to revive the woolly mammoth so we are very lucky that we have uh, so many soft fossils of it that means the uh, well preserved mammoths uh, you know muscle tissues right from permafrosts of siberia we do have a, a collection even stem cell so with the stem cell you can even revive the entire population you, you know so that is a pretty interesting story so another very interesting story is an asteroid named after an indian scientist you know so the asteroid is called 215884 asteroid so uh, uh, you know thousands of asteroids so only very few has got uh, accepted names after human being so this particular asteroid is named after jayant murthy professor from indian institute of science uh, a very famous astrophysicist and recently he gave a talk and uh, you know what he said i really like his quote our world is built on basic science and part of basic science is rationality reason rationality steven pinker's book i i reviewed that book in this channel right that's very interesting yeah to to have an asteroid named after himself and another related story is 13 billion year old streams of the stars near milky way center were discovered by a team from max Planck institute uh, in in germany the lead author is again an indian origin scientist and um, uh, the author named these particles, basically the earliest known particles of our galaxy, not the whole universe, but our own galaxy, the, the Milky Way. And the author named it after, guess what, ancient Indian uh, figures, right? The God and Goddess, Shiva and Shakti, right? Uh, male and female, uh, like Shiva Tandava, right? The, the, the cosmic dance, isn't it? So, yeah, it's pretty interesting way to name these particles, right? Shiva and Shakti by this Max Planck Institute German team. Yes. Next story. Twisted magnetic field at the center of the same galaxy, our own galaxy, right? Of course, the center of the Milky Way, there is a black, black hole called Sagittarius A star. So, of course, the picture came up around three, three years back by the famous consortium of telescope called... Uh, uh, event horizon so the same telescope the event horizon telescope uh, you know it's an array of telescopes not just one telescope but many telescopes together produced a much refined image you may please check out the all the links are in the show notes of this video so that shows the twisted magnets you know magnetic streams around the uh, same uh, black hole sagittarius a star black hole the new picture of the same picture old picture much more refined much better in in terms of resolution so what it says is about the magnetic field around the you know the the black hole pretty interesting next story is again uh, to do with the the climate change polar vortex above the arctic is now reversing its trajectory so polar vortex is basically a clockwise stream of uh, gas you know above the arctic while in Antarctic, it is counterclockwise or anticlockwise. But now, recently, from the last two weeks, the polar vortex is in above the Arctic. Instead of clockwise, it is now counterclockwise. 
that is pretty alarming that will have impact on uh, el nino and la nina all the southern oscillation phenomenon and also um, the impact on ozone levels you see ozone is a pollutant gas in the lower stratosphere so because of this change in the directionality of vortex now the stratosphere and uh, tropospheric ozone levels are increasing so the it's, it's causing more pollution uh, in in our atmosphere next story is coming from japan japan's uh, the the moon lander which we covered in the uh, last episode of the the curiosity isn't it uh, last last episode the japan also successfully landed on the moon it's the soft landing uh, the lander is known as slim lander slim lander uh, uh, the last a month's curiosity we featured odysseus right the private venture from the us the private company they also landed uh, softly uh, now the interesting thing is that recently the three landing happened right india's uh, chandrayaan 3 and also the odysseus the american uh, you know private rocket firm and also the japan slim so japan slim survived two lunar night that is a big news because Odysseus couldn't survive. Indian, uh, you know, the our own Chandrayaan also couldn't survive even have one night. Uh, in, in moon, one night is of 15 days. So that's a really long and it's super cold. You know, battery completely dies. But uh, this slim lander survived two such nights. That means almost a month without any power. So if it can survive two nights, it will, I think it will be there for at least for a few years time. Isn't it? Another related news. Uh, again, it's a, it's a good news coming from Voyager 1. Last episode we covered the Voyager 1, uh, the scientists, the NASA scientists were thinking that it is probably gone forever. We completely lost the communication with that uh, spacecraft. You see this Voyager 1 is the only man-made object which is now beyond the solar system. It is in the interstellar space, you know. Uh, after four months of hiatus, and also gibberish, some signal uh, which we cannot make it out. Now, a properly readable message is coming from Voyager 1. Exciting story that completely revived the Voyager 1 team of NASA. Ninth story coming from Isro, Pushpak. Pushpak is basically a reusable, you know, landing vehicle has been successfully tested. That is a very interesting. I really like this reusable, uh, you know, the uh, space landing modules right landing vehicle so usually it is just disposable landing vehicle right once it landed you cannot reuse it but this is you can actually get it back to uh, earth and we can reuse in the subsequent launches so that is pretty interesting it saves a lot of your power uh, 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 you know uh, your resources money but above all it reduces the space junk that is uh, you know the sustainable solution that is very interesting it named as Pushpak, right? 21st century Pushpak, Viman. Uh, another very exciting story coming from India is about Samudrayan set to explore the ocean floor by 2025 end. So that is by the Ministry of Earth Sciences, right? Samudra, like Chandrayan or Mangalyan. So this one is Samudrayan. So many people say that, uh, you know, one of the popular aphorism is that humanity know more about moon than our own uh, ocean right ocean almost 99 percentage remain unexplored and as of now india don't really have any uh, manned or even unmanned uh, deep diving uh, sub submersibles you know submarines right of course we do have submarines for the military but not really for the uh, research expeditions right so now i'm really excited because i'm uh, you know uh, yeah uh, above all I'm, I'm a marine biologist so I'm really excited about this Samudrayan launch coming up in the uh, late next year. So uh, next story is coming from Karnataka. There is a, a chemical called Rhodamine B, which is a coloring agent. Uh, so the coloring agent that is uh, used to import the red color in the cotton candies. You know, the cotton candies uh, sold uh, near the festivals and all, right? F children usually have the of course, the adults also, right? I also like the cotton candy. So the coloring substance has something called rhodamin B. And the same uh, coloring substance is also used for Gobi Manchurian, a popular fast food, right? Manchurian, the Chinese inspired uh, fast food, the cauliflower fast food, right? Uh, it's, it's a Chinese dish. 
So this particular chemical is uh, now uh, confirmed to be carcinogenic and above all, uh, you know, it, it causes cancer, but also it can lead to renal failure and also liver failure. So many, uh, you know, so many, um, uh, you know, so many diseases, really uh, tough diseases, you know, dangerous diseases are associated with this particular compound. And um, the, the government in Karnataka banned it. So the latest news says that the sales of Gobi Manchurian have dramatically decreased because there is no color and the people usually associate the taste with the color. So no one is interested to buy that now. But I really like the proactive approach of these governments. So I wish our order and bees banned throughout India now. You know, it is really important uh, on a public health perspective. Next story is about AFib, atrial fibrillation. Right, so atrial fibrillation is basically auricles or atriums of your heart. Uh, keep on beating, but super fast, but not really forceful. Right, very less forceful. Many, I mean, uh, many beats per minute. So you can easily detect it when you do uh, ECG. My mother has this AFib for so many years now. Right, now AFib is tied to the sugary and artificially sweetened drinks. Yet another reason to stop drinking, you know, sugary drinks like uh, sweetened juice or Coke and Pepsi and those kind of soft drinks with added uh, truck loads of sugar, right? Stay away. Next story is about resurgence of mums in Kerala. So in Kerala in the last one month, in one district alone, more than 200 cases of mums. You know, mums is... Uh, almost gone from our country and elsewhere rest of the world right but uh, this particular district is called Kasaragodu and it is in the right in the north of Kerala so in that district alone 200 cases have come up so I think the main reason why this resurgence is the vaccine hesitancy in certain uh, you know uh, demographics of human uh, society right certain religion the, the hesitancy is too high Right, they uh, the, these days also the, the common people and social media influencers say uh, that, that because of the COVID vaccine people are getting heart attack. No, ICMR has clearly invalidated it. Those are all bogus claims. Please never fall for such fake news being spread by the the WhatsApp university. You know, so vaccine is completely safe, but unfortunately because of eroding trust in science, people started. Uh, you know, being skeptical of vaccines. And that is the reason why mums, long eradicated, but now it is actually resurging. And not just here in Kerala, but also elsewhere. For instance, even in um, Britain, the Great Britain, measles is now coming up. So, mom, uh, measles have been reported from Britain last month. You know, that is yet another story. Please check out all the, the uh, links to these studies are in the show notes. Right? So measles as well as mumps can easily be stopped by one vaccine. It's a combined vaccine, right? Um, uh, called MMR vaccine. Mumps, uh, you know, measles and rubella, right? So it is a, it's basically three uh, antibody, uh, three antigen vaccine, right? These are basically the, the killed antigen vaccine, isn't it? Yeah, or subunit vaccines too. So, uh, Tetravalent, that is a technical term, right? Tetravalent vaccine. There are three moieties in it causing the immune response. Next story is also not that very good uh, about the life expectancy in India. The latest figure in 2022 is uh, 67.7 years. That means average Indian now live up to 67.7 years. That is remarkably low in terms of the world average. You see? So, we were 70.9 just in 2019. So, within three years, the figure has gone down 67.7. I think one of the reasons is the COVID-19. COVID-19 hit us really bad. And most of the countries in the world, the life expectancy has, uh, though that not that much an extent, but it has a uh, little bit reduced in the latest figure. So as in India, but ours is really drastic. I'm really surprised about this. Uh, there could be another reason, uh, the seasonal air pollution. I told you the air pollution is 
you know it has a knock on effect on every aspect of human life friends including the life expectancy nearby pakistan uh, the life expectancy is lesser than india lower than india right ours is right now 67.7 in pakistan it is 66 how about down south sri lanka almost 10 years longer 76 point something is their life expectancy right so yeah we have to fight this air pollution the seasonal air pollution by all means you know that is that one solution uh, is going to have an impact on our life expectancy really uh, ne next few stories about microplastics so there is a very interesting paper published last week uh, association between microplastics and cardiovascular diseases so if you're exposed to microplastics chances of cardiovascular diseases are substantially high so in one of the earlier episode of the curiosity i've covered that every one of us around the world we inhale one credit card sized microplastics every week one week one credit card sized microplastic we are inhaling to our lungs so now the paper says is microplastics are associated with the cardiovascular disease the the more you exposed the more riskier uh, uh, that you might develop the cardiovascular that is a heart disease you see Another paper, microplastics can accumulate in cancer cells and even help them to spread to the different locations. You see that metast metastasis, right? Metastatic cancer, not localized, but started spreading. So microplastics are involved with metastasis. So the third paper is how to get rid of this, uh, you know, microplastic. Very simple and effective solution. The authors say boiling the tap water that itself is a very interesting solution almost 90 percentage of the microplastics can be removed just by boiling that is pretty interesting right so yeah well anyway that is only one way to get microplastic is by water but it can be in in the in the uh you know in another uh, other kinds of food uh, also the inhaling in the, in the air that we breathe so yeah we need to actually um, do a lot more studies on those lines last episode we covered about the first neural link recipient so you know the, the it's a brain implant right it's basically electronic devices implanted into the brain for uh, certain patients that they have lost the neuronal ability right so the new paper is about the uh, rather it's a media report it's coming from the first neural link recipient patient uh, the patient now can control the chest just by thinking you see play chess just by thinking look at that that is amazing isn't it so yeah it's a remarkable uh, you know human robot intermediate isn't it so that is bionic man or bionic woman gender is not revealed but that is really amazing i think the, it's a male I, I have seen some of the pictures so it looks like an old man so he can play chess with just by thinking can you think of it you know let uh, uh queen move from this to that so the queen moves so that is amazing right i really like this story next is alarming story excessive heat uh you know can double the stillbirth risk among the female workers so uh the female uh, the, i think the, this study was conducted in uh, tamil nadu and uh, among the the female workers of tea gardens of uh, tamil nadu right they looked at uh, the heat when they were working and uh, the birth of I mean the risk of stillbirth basically abortion you know pregnant woman how many uh, women are getting abortion so abortion is linked with the extreme heat at work so because of the global warming uh, you know occupational risk is also now getting increased for uh, such issues like stillbirth a very interesting study i think it's coming from iit madras very interesting kudos to the authors and uh, next story is a very good story cheetah you know uh, we got few cheetahs from africa right and now one of the cheetah lady cheetah huh? girl cheetah so this female cheetah's name is gamini gave birth to five cubs in uh, madhya pradesh uh, kuno national park that is really a good news so all five cups are now alive and happy happily living in kuno national park so with this birth the big cat count has been risen to 26 now 
So we now have 26 cheetahs. Can you believe it? So we had cheetah in India long, long back, but then it's completely got extinct. The so-called local extinction, not global, because the, the cheetahs were still there in Africa, right? Then we repopulated and now it's a very good news coming there. Next is uh, uh, an AI model. Uh, the model is called Garpini GA2. Very interesting, right? As the name suggests, it's about gestation. It's about the fetus, right? Ultrasonography scan. Uh, with this model, just by looking at the scan images of the ultrasonograph, the model, the AI model can predict the age of the fetus, right? So till now, those AI models were based on Japanese and uh, European and American training data sets. So it was not working that good in Indian population. Now, this new data set has come up from uh, a team from Translational Medical Research Institute in uh, Faridabad, Garpini GA2. It's a new AI model uh, can uh, now come with a very accurate gestational age predictions of the fetus. I really like this paper. Now, another very interesting paper is about the computing paradigm shift by parallel processing between this processor, CPU, GPU. You know, for example, a, a mobile phone, if you look at that, it has got several chips, right? So GPU, it has CPU, it has and RAM, it has. So as of now, it is actually serially connected. So this curious scientists, what they did is that instead of serial, why not to make it parallel, right? processing parallelly. So without any new kind of innovation, just this change alone resulted in twice as fast. So now that your computer and your you know, smartphones can be double in terms of fast, while 50% more energy efficient, that means 50% less energy consumption. That is amazing, right? This, this finding is amazing. Uh, yeah. Next is AI models that can now talk with each other and can even sp spread the skill. Like one AI model can teach its skill to another AI model. It's something like dystopian future as predicted in books like 1984, isn't it? AI now can talk with each other and they can learn without any human intervention. Check out the, the story in the show notes of this, uh, you know, this video, right? Next is that there is no evidence that CBD product, that is basically cannabis, right? Uh, marijuana, the uh, cannabinol, uh, you know, um, active moiety. I mean, it's not really active moiety. Uh, it is basically uh, like C it's CBD oil is very popular, isn't it? In the West, if you see, like in Amsterdam, any small shop you go you will get the cbd of course the cbd you won't get that kind of high you know so yeah that is the um thc right tetrahydroxy c forgot what it is so thc is the active moiety that is actually giving that marijuana that high feeling but cbd is secondary of it but it is being sold as a uh, you know, a panacea, it can cure for everything like pain relief and this and that, what not, right? But now the new story says that it doesn't work. It's nothing but pseudoscience. Yeah, check out that uh, story link in the show notes. Next story is that the human brains, if you look back in time, you know, like 1970s till date, the size of human brain is increasing that is pretty interesting. It's getting larger. The brain is getting larger. So, uh, you know, it says that in 1970s had 6.6% larger brain volumes and almost 15% larger brain surface area than born in 1930. So, it, it's comparing 1930 much older to 1970. Right? So, 6.6% 6 .6 volume increase, 15% surface area increase. So this volume increase has something to do with your dementia risk. So it is getting reduced because there is a lot of brain reserve, right? So reducing the risk of the dementia. So it has published in JAMA Neurology. Check out the, the paper in the show notes. Now you might have heard of the buzzword quantum computing. Here in India, we have National Quantum Computing Mission. You know, it's uh, 
way too much of the amount i cannot even imagine how much is that well now the google has announced a very interesting competition 5 million us dollar award for anyone who come up with practical utility of this quantum computing no one even knows how to use quantum computing look at that i first i thought it's a pun right Go, google is coming with an award to find what the use of quantum computing so as of now it's useless see anyone if you can find a use of potential real world use of quantum computing apply for this award google will give you 5 million us dollar you know so that is you know that is something i learned last month well to death obituaries daniel Kahneman, you know highly revered psychologist in this century right i read his book uh, thinking fast and slow uh, he is an israeli uh, you know uh, behavioral economist he won the nobel prize in 2022 right uh, dies aged 90 years right then another scientist very famous scientist is anthony epstein so he discovered uh, epstein barr virus a very famous virus no? epstein barr virus it's infectious uh, viral particle right so pathologist so dies at the age 102 years uh, so another two stories are good story let me end the show with these two stories at least the first part of it pig kidney transplanted to human for the first time in boston that is very interesting right so these are called xeno transplantation coming from an entirely different animal right so pig kidney so many months back there had been a, a news about heart from pig unfortunately the man died within a few weeks time right but this just happened we still don't know how long the person is going to survive but that is pretty interesting and another news the last story of this month's curiosity coming from delhi sir gangaram hospital in new delhi a painter who lost both of his arm got you know the organ donation so it is basically the donor arms came and uh, the uh, gangaram hospital uh, surgeons did this extremely minute surgery joining every single arteries every single vein muscle and even neuron so now he has got his hands and more do you know what he can even move that hands amazing isn't it? this is the first time in the world unfortunately the news i haven't read elsewhere than ndtv in here in india right we really need to publicize news like that it's it's nothing less than a mystery right a person who lost his limb you're getting back both the hands but all kudos i would say of course that the surgeons uh, you know in the um, gangaram lots of respect to you but equally who donated that is also a question here so the person who donated is a lady uh, let me read out uh, her name mrs mina mehta right working in a, a public school in south delhi and unfortunate demise brain death of her but she promised to donate all her organs post death and not just her hands were useful to the painter but also her liver you know uh, bow you know his, her liver and both the kidneys were harvested and you know it, it actually that is that is the beauty of it i'm also a complete organ donor signed up through noto of uh, ministry of uh, health government of india you can do it too right so yeah so do check out all the show notes of this uh, you know uh, these stories these all uh, you know 25 stories that i covered and uh, also ch do check out our facebook group for more information right more stories that i haven't covered in this episode of curiosity next part of the curiosity is observances coming up in the month of april second is uh, you know uh, autism awareness day and the third uh, and also the second that is tomorrow right and tomorrow is also beginning of international dark sky week of course the dark sky is really important for sky watchers isn't it uh, but unfortunately because of the the light pollution sky watching as a hobby is getting diminished 
so we really need to preserve the dark and clear night skies 5th of april is conscience day so conscience is all about empathy right and also about uh, ethics what is good and what is not to do as per your value system so to have a strong sense of ethics conscience is really important that is what the fifth is about sixth is moon mars conjunction moon and mars in the same picture frame right seventh is world health day eighth is the most anticipated in the viewers of this curiosity from uh, you know from americas total solar eclipse it's not annular right usually the solar eclipse is annular the ring around the sun the ring of hair but this is complete it's completely the total right and the totality will last for around seven minutes so that is pretty interesting right and yeah and we will have another uh okay this episode uh you know eclipse a uh, solar eclipse of eight is not visible from india okay and we will have another eclipse though not that dramatic like this in october uh 2nd of october our gandhi jayanti you can find annular solar eclipse of course both of these eclipses are not visible in the india so annular eclipse on the 8th, 2nd of october is visible in south america while this one is uh, 8th of april is north of americas including the us like houston uh, you know and new york you can completely see that totality there and also mexico right and as usual solar eclipse will happen only during new moon day so 8th is the new moon day right so uh, basically the moon is in between earth and sun so moon is casting its sh shadow on the earth that is what this solar eclipse is all about right but 18th september we will be having partial lunar eclipse not solar but lunar eclipse which is visible from india so let us wait for 18th september to see an, another next eclipse 11th of april is a very interesting day for conjunctions there will be saturn and mars conjunction and also moon and jupiter conjunction pretty interesting mark on your calendar go upstairs or go to your front or backyard or park near to your home and take an image of this right do share it in our facebook group right whatever the image that you take of the night sky i never decline okay please do share it 21st of april is comet 12p it's an excellent day to spot the comet 12p and also it's an international day for creativity and innovation as per the un convention 22nd april as i already told you it is uh you know international mother earth day earth day mother earth day and also 22nd you can see lyrics meteor shower if you happen to be living in uh, himalayas or uh, you know down south some some places like uh, uh, kodaikanal or uti you know all those munar those uh, western cuts you can see this lyrics meteor shower 23rd is another meteor shower pi puppet meteor shower and also it's an international book day as per the un 24th is the um you know the uh, full moon day of this month the so-called pink moon as per the american almanac right uh yeah red indian almanac of the tribal people right pink moon 25th is malaria day and 26th is ipr day intellectual property rights day 28th is safety and health at work day that's also extremely important observance coming the last section of curiosity the opportunities icmr in serm france bilateral grant scheme is open now it's between icmr uh, medical research right indian council of medical research and in serm in, in france right 15th april so in case you want to go to the france on uh, research, research or visa you can try it out this this grant will support your visit icgeb research grants uh, 30th of april is the deadline for it Professor M. K. Pan Mid-Career Research Fellowship Program. The deadline is same, 30th of April. And uh, there are uh, there is one government, uh, you know, um, international studentship call open today. As of today, I checked the ministry's uh, scholarship website. It's by Cyprus government. 
post graduate fellowship especially in biochemistry medical microbiology medical molecular biology all those you know biology related field if you want to apply for a msc degree from cyprus you can apply 15th may is the deadline cyprus by the way i'm not sure how many of you know this country it's a very small island nation near greece extremely rich country it's a very high in human developmental uh, index human development index you know hdi that uh, is an indicator of the wealthiness of the country you know and also living standard extremely high cyprus and uh, there is a, an, a prize call is also open unesco prize for girls and women in science if you have made any substantial contributions in the field of scientific research you can apply 30th april is the deadline and of course several jrf and project position calls are there do check out our facebook group links are in the show notes and uh, that's it for this uh, month's episode of curiosity I wish you all a very productive and, uh, uh, you know, curiosity-filled month of April. I will see you soon in yet another episode of Curiosity in the month of May. Until then, goodbye.